So, first of all, tell us about what it's like coming to a brand new venue. Oh, I enjoy it. I like getting to a new venue. It's exciting. It stops it becoming monotonous. So for me, I'm like, oh, okay, here we are. And let's set up home and everything. So I really enjoy getting somewhere new. Yeah. And you like touring? Do you say? Yeah, I like this theatre. It's um, it's quite an open space. Yeah, it I sort like of that runs, too. it's quite a low stalls and then mm. runs back. So it's quite it's a good venue to play, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Good for sound and stuff. Yeah. I enjoyed it this week. Yeah, I saw the show on Monday. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. really, really enjoyed oh, it. Oh, brilliant. It's such a good fun feel good yeah show, it is. yeah it? yeah definitely but, but anyone who doesn't quite get the fat friends thing mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about what it's about um well basically it's um it centers around kelly who um she's the daughter of betty and and fergus and they own the fish and chip shop and she's completely madly in love with her fiance kevin and they love each other so much um, and she's never ever thought about her weight at all. She's just been like, yeah, just get on with it. But she wants this wedding dress and the dress is two sizes too small. Um, so she's encouraged to go on a diet to get into the dress. And then the character of Julia Fleshman, who is the slimming guru, so to speak, mm. who my character works for, she kind of tries to convince her to lose all this weight very quickly to get in this dress within six weeks and it'll all be all over the papers and she'll become the new face of this. So it's very much like, it's kind of a bit about celebrity and then dieting and, you know, all that pressure. And the journey is very funny anyone that's been to a slimming club or a slimmer's group is yeah. so relatable yeah and um, but yeah essentially it focuses on kelly's journey really yeah and then there's like the underlying story of you two isn't there? yeah, a little yeah. Love <laughs> as, is a, a, as is a very cute kind of subplot yeah. that's going on yeah so um, you're lauren aren't you yeah so i play lauren and i own the bridal shop and run the slimming club that um kelly attends and she's in love with Paul, who is the vicar, and yes. Lauren's you. That's Paul, the vicar, yeah. slash Zumba teacher, yeah. who works in Have the church hall. Have you ever done that kind of thing before? Or? Uh, well, I did um, sport at college and stuff, so right. I'd, I'd seen um, I'd seen Zumba. You danced like on Let It Shine. Yeah, I've danced a lot. <laughs> I was going to mention that, Let yeah, It Shine. Yeah, I, um, yeah I'd done a bit of... of uh, and that sort of thing before and then mm. I just researched it for the role and sort of looked at it and then thought I mean Zumba's quite a new thing isn't it like it's not it's not years and years old is it? it? No, it's it like is. Quite it's, a, quite a, it's quite old now but I mean yeah, the, but, um, boys, yeah I just like, yeah, boys, I just looked at it and thought it's quite a new sort of <laughs> yeah. take on, on, on fitness and especially like a, a sort of slimmers group or whatever incorporating that in Yeah. so I sort of looked at it a lot and um, I wonder how many vicars actually do I know it'd be interesting, right? I know a lot of vicars that work in like church halls next door and do sort of extra curricular, but I don't know yeah. if it's uh, Zumba. <laughs> Maybe I'm bringing it. Mm. I'm uh, starting a new trend. He could. He started his own classes. Yeah. yeah. So, what was it like working with Kay Meller, who wrote, obviously wrote Fat Friends, the TV series? And oh, now it's been brilliant. Really... I mean, I've been a massive fan of Kay since I was about 15. Like, I loved Band of Gold. It was one of the mm. first things that I really saw and wanted to be in television for and I've told her this many times um, uh, it's been brilliant to work with her and, and, and for me personally I'm a Leeds girl so mm. we connect on that level and things that she says I really get it and I really got this story and I got the people that she was talking about because not for us not for us we're um, allowed out but Kate, yeah, yeah Kate, sorry um, Kate is it's quite a rare thing actually to work on a new show and work with the writer as, yes, as director yeah. Yeah. and so and she's sort of really collaborative so she'd sort of come into rehearsals and say look if you've got ideas or if you've got things that you think let's let's try them let's like she'll tell you if it's no like she, yeah. she'll she'll encourage you to do stuff i mean like i stuck a moonwalk into the show but that <laughs> happened in rehearsals just by me sort of messing around i just said you know what I'm, I need to get from there to there. I'm gonna try this, and then Kay was like, "It's brilliant. Keep, Keep it, it in, in. yeah." yeah. yeah like, and to work and with someone Lauren like that. On, on paper was quite different, really. Like for what we have yeah. brought together as a as a as a couple, as a, like two people together, they're quite daft and they're quite mm. like you mm. know ditzy together. But on paper, it doesn't necessarily read that way. It could be read very differently. Okay. Uh, yeah. But she's allowed us to kind of grow with the roles and grow our relationship in particular as well, mm. and things that we've popped in and little bits and bobs that are now kind of coming out much more and she said that she likes it so that's, that's good <laughs> so did you um have to audition for the parts or did Kay come to you because you've worked with her before haven't you yeah mine came in a bit of a sort of 
um, audition slash working with her before. Mm, yeah. I um, I was doing Love Lies and Records mm. with her on BBC One, and then um, I sang at a sort of concert thing, and Simon Lee, the arranger, and Nick Lloyd Webber and stuff saw me, and that. So like, I didn't particularly go in and. Right. and do a set audition it just happened over time but they're, yeah. they're like the best ways really yeah. like that's the best way rather than sort of going and standing yeah, in front it's of nice a panel when of, you know, yeah, yeah when it you sort of organically yeah. happened in that way but i read it and they sent me the script and said read it and tell me what it like just just mm. read it and see and i read it and I, I didn't even need to read it i knew straight away i was like oh this is an amazing opportunity and yeah. it'll be a great so i read it and then heard nothing for a few weeks and then they just came back to me and said um, it's an offer and I was Brilliant. like absolutely like no bones about it yeah yeah so uh, well they're all warming up so I, I saw on um, Twitter that um, Natasha had you all uh, doing an atonic. Oh my god, it was brilliant yeah, that day. It was so routine. good that day. And um, because every week our dance captain Ryan, like if you sing or sung or anything, and, and so many of us have had like albums and stuff like that. So every week he's kind of dedicated a week to somebody. Ah. So this that particular week was Natasha's week, and oh, it was brilliant. We she was just like doing the full routine, and we all she was like, come on, this is how you do it, and we just all got involved. It, looks it really was brilliant. Good. Yeah. Oh, it was so and if you much watch fun. it back secretly, so many people know that oh, routine. So, so many people know it. Really. For all <laughs> yeah. fans yeah, of that era, it, it was, uh, all that nineties music, mm. um, everybody, so you can look at everyone, and they they're all they're doing. Like, it right. the dream. They're not even learning it, they're just yeah. doing it right. That's great. Um, it's funny, it's like, um, I didn't realise, because <coughs> when I heard you singing on Monday night, I was like, wow, she's got an amazing, such an amazing oh, thank voice. You. But people that have only probably seen you in Emmerdale or the Royal mm -hmm. don't realise perhaps that you've done Wicked. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I trained in musical theatre originally, that's mm. kind of what my background was. Mm. And then kind of really fell into television. I did a lot of telling when I was young and then when I graduated from drama school, kind of went straight into television and did mm. it consecutively for like eight years, which has been amazing for me, absolutely mm. amazing. But it has been nice to kind of go back to that skill set of musical theatre and, yeah. you know, and also bring something different because when I was younger and I was doing musical theatre, to me it was all about the song, always about the mm. song and about the tuning and everything. Whereas coming at it now, after so many years of television acting as well, you bring so many different things to it now. Yeah. Well, that's what I, how I feel about it. And it's nice to be able to bring that skill set together. Yeah. I think with this as well, if you sort of strip all the music out and all the dance and everything underneath, you've got like a solid play, play. script. Yeah, of course. So like you, you've got that underneath it, sort of the music adds to it and obviously mm. brings that entertainment and storytelling, but it's stripped it all away. I think you're right though, I think that's what was really interesting for me, for, I think that jump of going from television into musical theatre, the perfect per per person to work with was Kay. Yeah. Because that's her background too. But also she's written the lyrics. That's what, she? yeah, and that's yeah. what I'm saying, it's all, it all, for me being able to work on with her on this particular project, it's it's bringing the two things together, like there's so much of it that's quite televisual in the script, mm. Mm. and I, I've loved that. I've really loved it and being able it's to. It's a gift from an acting point of view as well yeah. to get so so much material, so much information. Because I think a lot of sort of um, I don't want to pick anything in particular, but a lot of pop stuff or things like that, you, you don't you don't get as much scope or as much uh, as much information within a song or yeah. within a scene to mm. then There's go. So much this is what it is. In the songs. This is what it is. This is what I need to get across. And so like yeah. it's sort of a gift really mm. to get that information and go. It's all here. I I just have to now. Mm. Hard for Jodie though, because Jodie has so much storytelling in her mm. song. Yeah, she's got so many wordy songs, yeah. but she's amazing. And she's it. funny, and it's emotional as yeah, well, isn't brilliant. it? She's yeah. so brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. They're just yeah. accessible characters. We all know people like an yeah. Alan or, or a Kelly or whatever, and and you see them in day to day life that it. It doesn't matter where you're from, whatever house we're playing, all around the country or whatever. Mm. Everyone comes along and goes, God, oh, I know I someone know just like yeah. that. Or I've been to a slimming group and, and they say you need to lose two pounds. So then the whole focus of your week becomes lo like yeah. losing those two pounds because you want to impress other people. You want to, it's exactly. like, a, it's an interesting sort of psychological uh, yeah. thing as human beings about, about weight, especially now, like things like Instagram and. Uh, and things like that are just putting it everywhere, mm. um, you know, yeah. uh, diet and exercise and fitness and all this. It, it can be a pressure for people, mm. especially if your job doesn't allow you to 
And I just love that the fact that this show just basically the message is embrace yeah, who, you are. Love who you are yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. definitely i think it's that's what's refreshing about it in the sense that like jonathan's saying you know um you've got such a, a fit with the whole world seems to have a fixation with diet and, mm. and image and mm. all these huge instagram stars that have come along from you know that have got millions and millions of followers and joe wicks and people like that yeah. that have come all the way through instagram and 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 youtube and we are becoming very obsessive about it, very mm. obsessive, more so than we probably were when Fat Friends was actually first written. Yeah. It's probably more relatable yeah, now. Because Twitter so many... and Facebook exactly. weren't around then, was So it? it's, it's a great message to say, you know what, it doesn't matter. And that's the whole point of Kelly. Kelly yeah. didn't think about that thing in, in, in the first place. No. She was really happy and, with and, herself. Mm. And Kevin, I mean, Kevin, who was played by Freddie Flintoff and, and Joel. Joel Montague, they sort of share that role. Mm. It, I mean, he gets... Sort of uh, that character sort of gets overlooked as such when we're talking about you know these mm. characters, but his simplicity and his love for Kelly and his sort of mm. like it doesn't matter mm. it what's going her, on. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. that that is an underlying line and grounding point of the show. So like when you know Kelly's going through this psychological slimming tablets and mm. trying everything, and she's such a big character. And and you see, you know, she's a young woman, and you see all those pressures. But underneath, you've just got Kevin that's just saying it's fine. You don't yeah. need this. You don't need this. Mm. You don't need to look a certain way because I, I love, love you the way you are. are. Yeah. All the way through, but it takes the whole journey to then get back to that and go, mm. why did I not just see that in the first place? But that's what happens in life, isn't it? Yeah. You have yeah. so many partners and, and people that just say, it doesn't matter. I don't mm. care True. if you, yeah. do you know what I mean, big or small, or whatever. Definitely. Just got to quickly touch on the fact that Freddie Flintoff isn't coming to South End. But um, what's it like being working with him? Because he can be a bit of a practical joker, can't he? From what I see. <laughs> he is, but it's good <laughs> to have around. He is a practical joker, but he's brilliant to have about. Yeah, he's uh, he's good fun. He's always on the wind up. Yeah, he's always looking for a joke. But always it's good to be it. around. And also, like I think what probably a lot of people don't see is that he's he is competitive within himself and everything so mm. like he's he doesn't he, he doesn't he jokes around but he's like he he's deadly seriously. seriously about this show it's a challenge yeah. Yeah. it's a challenge and he, and he wants, wants to be to the best it. that he can possibly yeah. be yeah. and and that that's nice for us like that's because you know obviously when you put somebody in and people's going well he's a cricketer yeah you know and they kind of overlook the fact that he does so much broadcasting now mm. but even for us, it's kind of like, oh, that's, how's that going to work then? But then you see how um, how much he really, really wants to learn and how much he's so dedicated to it and really, you know, even in warm-up, he's, he's full on yeah, with the warm-ups and I'm like, everything. oh, look at you. Yeah. <laughs> but he's yeah. really committed yeah. to it, yeah. which is good for all of us because it means we've got, we're all in it together, really, and everyone's very supportive of him. He had a break, didn't he? Like he's yeah. a, he had a break where he did leads and then he sort of missed three or four weeks just how, how it's set out mm. it work as well. yeah and he came back and he didn't drop a line he was wow. on it show away. and so we looked and kind of went we thought we'd have to sort of maybe have a, a few rehearsals just yeah. to get back in. I think just that's like what Jonathan's saying though in. is because he's professionalism, used to yeah, yeah. professionalism and competitive sport you kind of have to be prepared all the time yeah. I think that's just a sportsman's mindset it's given him that yeah. thing as well where you're back working with the team I know he was he was saying to Kay that he's loving back with a group of people because I suppose mm. when you're playing cricket you're in dressing rooms yeah, aren't you yeah, like yeah. with you've got camaraderie yeah, you've got between your teammates yeah, yeah. Mm. and um but like I, I know that telly's not always like television and things like that you sort of turn up and do, do your job and, and then yeah. go so yeah. you might have a quick chat in a canteen or whatever whereas this mm. we're sort of living <laughs> together together in and out of dressing rooms and on and off trains and cars yeah. and everything and doing yes, so it's good. It's, giving it, it's giving him that um you look like you won't be sorry when it's uh, oh no i will i'm just joking, yeah. joking. it just drives just me like brother and no, sister, it drives you me say. well i'm probably more like your mum johnny oh, <laughs> oh, winding, like his winding each other up and uh, oh. joking around yeah right well on that note i better let you um, get on with your well. You're not. You're not going to the warm up today. You've been well. well we, we've got. But we'll have to do our vocal warm up. Yeah. But we can do a jog around in between whilst we're getting ready. Okay. Well, thank you so much for talking. No, thank to you. Me today it's been a real pleasure. I'm going to go on and have a cup of coffee and a big donut now. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Look in that corner. There's loads of biscuits in mine in Natasha's room. There's like loads of biscuits and mini eggs and everything. Shouldn't have told me that. Shouldn't have told me that. Can I do that? Can I have a cup of tea and a biscuit? Please.